Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The quotation for today is, what you think of yourself is much more important than what people think of you. And I hope all of you know that. Today we are going to discuss Entamoebae. Six species have been identified. The three important are, number one, Entamoeba histolytica. It is of medical importance because it causes amoebic dysentery and amoebic liver abscess in human beings. Entamoeba coli present in the intestine and Entamoeba gingivalis, which is present in the mouth, are of interest as their trophozoids are difficult to distinguish from those of Entamoeba histolytica by light microscopy. At the end of the topic, all of you should be able to draw and label the morphological forms of this uh, parasite. You should be able to discuss the pathogenesis, intestinal lesion and complications of Entamoeba histolytica. Uh, you should be familiar with the lab diagnosis of acute, chronic and general intestinal amoebiasis and you should know everything about hepatic amoebiasis. Now, in third year, 50% of your examination questions are uh, case uh, history or they are scenarios. And this is the type of scenario that you see in your exam. A 20 years old male complains of severe abdominal pain and passage of uh, uh, foul-smelling blood-stained stool for the last six days. The stool specimen which was received in the laboratory showed, microscopic examination showed several motile trophozoids and or they could be a few tetranucleated cysts. So the questions related to this scenario would be like what is the most likely diagnosis, describe briefly the pathogenesis or the intestinal lesions produced by this pathogen, give its lab diagnosis, or you, be, you will be asked to well, enlist the complications of this parasitic infection, or you are asked to draw and describe the life cycle. The second uh, uh, scenario associated with this topic is uh, from amoebic liver abscess. Pus was aspirated from the right lobe of the liver of a 60 years old man. And this is the pus which we, you see over here. The man complains of repeated episodes of dysentery in the past, uh, few, past last year. Or how would you diagnose this case in the laboratory or in other words what would be this how would you this patient be labeled as a case of amoebic liver abscess and secondly what is anchovy sauce pus coming to its epidemiology this infection is seen worldwide most commonly seen in countries with poor sanitation like the third world countries and it is widely prevalent among the uh, homosexuals Modes of transmission is by cysts, and these cysts are transmitted by fecal oral route. The cysts are going to contaminate food and water and are then transmitted to humans, or there could be anal oral transmission seen in homosexuals. There is no animal reservoir. Man is the only host, so there is only one definitive host, and that is man. Regarding its morphological forms, two morphological forms are seen. One are the trophozoids and the second are the cystic forms. Now, the cystic forms, when they are passed, freshly passed, they contain just one nucleus. And as you can see, they are spherical structures. They are non-motile, surrounded by a thick wall, which makes it resistant to acidic pH. When they are passed, freshly passed, they are uninucleated bodies, but later the nucleus divide and into two and then into four nuclei. And this cyst, which is a tetranucleated cyst or it is a quadrinucleated cyst, is the infective stage of this parasite and this is one of your MCQs. Quadrinucleated or tetranucleated cysts are the infected form of this parasite. Besides this, you see this, gly this glycogen mass and chromidial bars are seen and these are the structures which are used up as nutrient by this, the cyst as it divides by binary fission. This is a slide showing you the, the uh, trophozoid form and the trophozoids as you can see these are the motile structure first of all and they have 
a clear area which is the ectoplasm and this clear area is thrown out as pseudopodium and it makes this organism motile and then it has this granular inner portion which is known as the endoplasm the endoplasm contains glycogen vacuoles it contains ingested rbc now this is ingested rbc is present in the this uh, uh, metrophozoid is the most important diagnostic feature of uh, the trophozoid of entamoeba histolytica then the second important thing is the nucleus the nucleus has a central dot in the center which is the nucleolus and the other name for this is the karyocyte now the nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear membrane and this nuclear membrane have fine chromatin granules on it as you see over here this is another picture showing you the nucleus here you can see the central nucleolus and this is known as the karyosome and as i said the nuclear membrane is lined by fine chromatin granules as you as you see over here and here you can see these ingested rbc's rbc's which are very important for diagnosis of this trophozoid by trichrome stain the uh, erythrocytes appear as dark inclusions as you see here coming to the life cycle of this parasite now the life cycle is seen in man only two phases of development are seen one are the trophozoid forms and the second are the cystic form now the infected form of uh, the parasite are the mature quadrinucleated cyst as i have already told you the life cycle begins with this tetranucleated cyst which is which is ingested by human uh, uh, taking contaminated food or water now these cysts because of the thick cyst wall pass unaffected through the stomach and excitation occurs in the small intestines by by means of trypsin the trypsin acts on the cyst wall breaks it up and that this result in releasing of amoeba one amoeba is released which have four nuclei these nuclei further divide resulting in eight nuclei and finally it gives rise to eight amoebae these eight amoebae which are released are highly motile and uh, they are going to either they remain they move to the large intestines and either they colonize over there and remain as asymptomatic colonies or they are going to uh, invade the intestinal mucosa and lodge itself in the submucosa of large intestine they start multiplying over there and they are going to secrete a proteolytic enzyme which is known as histolysin this histolysin is going to break down the the uh, muscularis mucosae of intestines and it is going to result in production of ulcers which are known as flask shaped ulcers as you see over here they have gone down they have lost themselves in the sub uh, submucosa starts have started secreting the enzyme which breaks down the tissue and this results in these flask shaped ulcers now when the, and this when flask ulcers are produced then this is the period when a large number of blood and mucus is thrown in uh, to, together with trophozoites is thrown in the intestinal mucosa and that results in acute amoebic dysentery so acute amoebic dysentery is a condition where you're going to see motile trophozoites with ingested rbc's together with blood and mucus in the stool with passage of time the host develop resistance the intestinal lesions start healing and the patient start forming normal stool and the trophozoites goes from goes out of the intestinal mucosa into the stool and they are converted or there there is excess excitation of these trophozoites these are the trophozoites which are now going to undergo encystation encystation is where the cyst wall is produced around this the, the trophozoites and um, this results in formation of a uninucleated cyst and this uninucleated cyst the, the cyst is excreted in the feces it further undergoes further development in the feces and is finally results into formation of this tetranucleated cyst uh, some of these uh, amoebae can penetrate deeper down 
here it can pass through the muscular cord and uh, it reaches the portal circulation from the portal circulation they are carried to the liver they start multiplying in the liver and there they result in formation of liver abscesses which are also known as amoebic abscesses now important thing to note here is that amoebic abscesses only have trophozoids there are no cystic form produced or seen in the liver only trophozoids are seen here so uh, life cycle what I've just told you I'm again repeating this that the cysts are swallowed with food and water Existation occurs in the small intestine by the action of trypsin. Yeast is, is going to liberate one amoeba with four nuclei and the nuclei divide by binary fission resulting in production of eight motile amoeba. These motile amoeba are going to invade the intestinal mucosa, colon or cecum. They lodge themselves here in the submucosa of large intestine, start secreting proteolytic histoline, histolysin, which is going to bring about necrosis of the overlying muscularis mucosa and this results in formation of flask shaped ulcers. When the host develop resistance, the trophozoids starts moving toward the intestinal mucosa and when they are released in the lumen of the intestine, encystation occurs. And this encystation results in formation of the cyst wall and resulting in formation of uninucleated cyst. And these uninucleated cysts are discharged in the stool. Further development occurs in the stool and they mature producing quadrinucleated cysts which are the infective form of this parasite. Liver amoebic abscess are produced when a few trophozoid penetrate deeper through the muscular layer into the portal circulation and are carried into the liver. They multiply in the liver and they lead to abscess formation which is known as amoebic liver abscess or amoebic liver hepatitis. An important thing is that only the trophozoids are seen over here, no encystation are seen in the liver. Coming to the pathogenesis of this pathogen, intestinal, it is going to produce intestinal amoebiasis. Incubation period is variable, generally four to five days. Pathogenic lesions can be primary, limited to the large intestines, or secondary, where extra colonic sites are involved, like the liver, brain, or the lungs. Regarding its pathogenesis, the trophozoids which have colonized in the colon and cecum, they can pass through the intestinal wall, secrete histolysin, destroy the tissue and reach the submucosa and multiply over there. These amoeba are going to move as you see over here, they are going to move in different directions, mainly laterally and they are going to destroy the submucosa and the overlying mucous membrane and this results in coagulative necrosis and formation of these flask shaped ulcers. Now if you see the this flask shaped ulcer, the base of this ulcer is formed by the muscular coat which is filled up with necrotic slough and the superficial part is the muscularis mucosae, deeper part is limited by limited to submucosa and Further extension can lead to complication when it passes through the muscular layer, goes into the portal circulation, then it could be carried to the liver and results in amoebic abscesses. Coming to the complication, liver abscess, which you see over here, 5% of the patient with intestinal amoebiasis are going to develop liver abscess and it is the right lobe which is mainly involved. The right, the, there may be a single uh, abscess or there may be scattered multiple abscesses in the right lobe. The right lobe abscess can penetrate through this upper diaphragm and it can go to the lungs producing lung disease. Another condition very commonly associated with the, uh, uh, this parasite is amoebomas. Amoebomas are defined as granulomatous lesions. These are granulomatous or chronic infectious lesions which are formed in the cecal or rectosigmoidal area. Then uh, these intestines can be perforated as it is boring its way, as, as the trophozoids are boring their way through the intestinal wall, they can produce perforation and hemorrhages. And when they reach the, this uh, uh, peritoneum, it can cause localized or generalized peritonitis. And we can also see gangrene of the colon.
So to summarize this all which we have done so far, modes of transmission I have told you are fecooral or analolal. Morphological forms are two trophozoids which are the mature forms and they have ingested RBCs that is something very important and then there are the cystic forms initial cyst is uninuclear but it is the tetranucleated or quadrinucleated cyst which is the most important form and that is the infective form of this parasite regarding its life cycle man is the only host and two de developmental phases have been seen the trophozoite forms and the cystic forms cysts are ingested by contaminated food and water and they are going to go into the colon and they will produce acute intestinal amoebiasis where there is going to be passage of uh, motile trophozoites blood and muc mucus in the stool Regarding pathogenesis, the most important thing is formation of flask-shaped ulcers. And uh, coming to complications, I've already told you, the first filter is liver, so there's going to be liver abscess. If it moves up the uh, diaphragm, it can infect the lungs, or there could be formation of amoebomas, or there could be gangrene or perforation. With this, I have I've done with a portion of uh, Entamoeba histolytica and in my le next lecture I'm going to move on to the life cycle uh, sorry to the uh, diagnosis uh, or the laboratory diagnosis now I've given you assignment you have to attempt all the MCQs before you mark yourself present and then you have to post it on the pathology department forum uh, the MCQs are related to what we have discussed so far like an intermediate host is the one which harbors. I'm sure all of you know what we are talking about now. Infective stage of entamoeba histolytica, I've tell, told you so many times in this lecture, so you should be able to answer this part. Superficial intestinal ulcers do not extend beyond, I've just told you where it stops and which is the deeper part and what is the superficial part of the ulcer. Most common organ involved in extra intestinal amoebiasis is you find your answer yourself thank you very much with this i'm going to finish this lecture and next time as i said we'll be moving on to the laboratory diagnosis